Thanks very much for asking uh, me to be involved with this and I'd also extend a welcome to everyone. Um, there's a lot of people here actually. It's really good to see so many of you that I, I recognise. I, we hope this is um, valuable for you. Um, my, my job was really just to set out what the Fontan operation is um, and this sort of talk is uh, always, I think, seems to be at, at the start of this, this day. Um, I'm not sure it's that easy. Some people, um, including many of many doctors and nurses um, dealing with kids, don't find it easy to understand necessarily. Um, <clears throat> and um, um, and so the first thing I'd say to you is is if it's something that you struggle with uh, understanding and um, uh, and whatnot, uh, it's it, it's important, or you shouldn't feel silly about that, uh, and it's important that you simply come along to clinics and ask us. Um, uh, questions and together um, we will help you learn more and more about it over time. Uh, many of you will come to understand it better than some of us, possibly. Um, <clears throat> so um, this talk is supposed to be very simple and many of you will know all of this and more probably. Um, there are, the heart is, when we're born, usually the heart has uh, two pumping chambers, two sides. So there's a, a, a left pump which takes blue blood with low oxygen back from the body veins um, and pumps it into the lungs and there's at low pressure. And there's a left side, the red side, which takes oxygenated blood back from the lungs and pumps it into around the body. So there's two sides of the heart with two pumps. There are lots and lots of um, different types of abnormalities the heart can have wrong with it when a baby is born. Um, and um, many of them are really minor issues and, and trivial. Uh, so, but they range up to the most severe kinds of issues where there are um, uh, basically um, where there's no possibility for there to ever be uh, two pumping chambers. Um, <clears throat> so there's a group of problems which I call functionally univentricular hearts where for different reasons there's no possibility of there being one pump to the lungs and one to the body. Um, that can be because a part of the heart has not developed properly, like a right ventricle or tricuspid valve in tricuspid atresia, or the left side of the heart in, in um, hyperplastic left heart syndrome, uh, or because there are so many different types of holes in the heart that make it impossible to close those, or there's abnormal connections of veins and arteries. There's a whole lot of different abnormalities that can lead to the same issue where we are only able to have one pump um, in the heart. So a couple of examples. This is tricuspid atresia where uh, there's, there's no proper tricuspid valve connecting the right atrium to the right ventricle and a very small right ventricle. Uh, this is hypoplastic left heart syndrome where in addition to small left heart structures uh, in the heart, the, the aorta is, is very tiny. Uh, um, so the reason why the Fontan operation is done, I mean, basically many of those conditions are not compatible with a long uh, life, um, some even with life beyond a few days after birth. Um, uh, but in addition to that, uh, it's done to uh, increase oxygen levels as close to normal as possible, um, to in some cases prevent too much blood flow into the lungs, which can lead to heart failure or other problems in the lungs, um, and to avoid risk of uh, clots or infections going from, 
the the venous or right side of the heart to the left side, and that, which can cause strokes and other serious infections. So <clears throat> the basic aims of the Fontan procedure, I think, are to um, restore normal oxygen levels, improve exercise tolerance and stamina, and extra things include improved concentration, improved exercise, resistance to infection, minimising the risk of clots, strokes, etc. <clears throat> so what is a Fontan circulation? It's, um, another name for it is total cavopulmonary connection. So basically the veins from uh, the body, which carry low oxygen, instead of draining into the heart uh, to be pumped into the lungs, they are one way or another directly connected to the pulmonary arteries so that the blood passively um, flows into the lung arteries without being pumped there. And so it's, it's, it's the surgery to correct the, the plumbing, basically, um, to do that. So, and the way that works is um, when this is done is that you um, develop increased pressure in these veins which drives the blood flow into the lungs and so it's that pressure gradient that allows blood to flow into the lungs and then through to the left side of the heart to be pumped around the body. In addition to that, uh, the, the breathing uh, acts as a pump as well. So when you breathe in, um, your lungs expand and uh, uh, blood vessels in your chest and lungs expand and they suck blood into the lungs. Um, <clears throat> and so you need good, healthy, normal-sized lungs and uh, lung arteries, pulmonary arteries, uh, for it to work properly or as well as possible. And, and you also need good heart muscle function um, <clears throat> and valve function, etc. You've seen this picture already. So the, um, there has been a, a, a series of modifications of the type or the way the surgery is done over 40 years or so uh, from this original description where um, the upper body vein drained blue blood to the right lung and the lower body vein was drained to the left lung via this direct connection between the right atrium and the left pulmonary artery. That was the initial description. Um, <clears throat> there were significant complications with that and the main, the biggest problems were that because the, this right atrium was under extra pressure, it tended to um, dilate uh, and there was also, um, and so there was abnormal flow of blood within that chamber and so clots formed within it um, and also the dilated abnormal muscle of the atrium uh, led to abnormal heart arrhythmias where there was a disconnect between the rhythm of the pumping of the atrium and the ventricle and, um, and dangerous heart arrhythmias. Um, <clears throat> so modifications were made in this. So this is the atriopulmonary connection, similar to the original description, the classic Fontan. Uh, and the right atrium was part of that circuit. That was altered in the 80s and 90s to this operation uh, where <clears throat> the end of the superior vena cava was directly attached to the pulmonary arteries instead of the atrium and there was sort of a half um, synthetic tube which was used to direct the flow of blood from the inferior vena cava into the lungs and so it excluded lots of the right atrium from um, from that circulation. Uh, complications were uh, significantly less. Um, however, there 
were still some issues with uh, arrhythmia in particular. And further modification was made where instead of that, there was a, a complete uh, synthetic tube of material which is connected to the inferior vena cava down here and then up to the pulmonary artery and uh, outside the heart. So it's called an extra cardiac uh, conduit, um, um, not involving the right atrial tissue at all. And so that's the procedure that is done by almost everyone um, still today. <clears throat> In terms of um, timing of the operations, so to be able to um, have a cavopulmonary shunt, I mentioned uh, the pressure in the veins driving the blood into the um, pulmonary arteries. Um, the pulmonary artery resistance and pressure is, is actually increased at birth and high in the first few months. And so that circulation would not work straight away. And so what is done in the first few months is uh, procedures to try and optimise blood flow uh, into the lungs in terms of the amount of it, to control the pressure of blood in the lungs, and, um, and to ensure there's no blockage of the pump of the heart and the arteries coming out of it. So different procedures may be done depending on what the underlying problem is um, uh, in the first days or weeks or months after birth. So that might involve um, <clears throat> a, a shunt where there's a connection from the aorta, the body artery, into the lung arteries to supply extra blood into the pulmonary arteries if, if it's low. It may in involve putting a pulmonary artery band or, or constriction on the pulmonary artery to decrease blood flow if there's too much into the lungs. In the situation of hypoplastic left heart syndrome, it, may, it, it involves a, a Norwood operation where a, a neo or new aorta uh, is fashioned uh, as well as a shunt to put extra blood into the pulmonary arteries. So those procedures are done initially and, and then it's at a few months of age um, where um, the first stage of the Fontan operation is done. So in the past, and in some cases, you can simply do a total cavo pulmonary connection straight up, but it was found that, so that very significant change in the circulation of blood in the body led to significant early complications. So there were people who were stuck in hospital for very long periods of time with fluid draining and collecting around their heart or lungs or tummy. Um, um, and so it was found that doing a staged um, cavopulmonary connection was better. And so that's what is usually done now, where just the superior vena cava is detached from the right atrium and attached to the pulmonary arteries as the first part of the uh, Fontan operation. And then usually at a few years of age, and it's variable exactly when that is, depending on the exact problem, the patient, the weight, the size, various things, uh, is that the, the cavo pulmonary connection is done. Um, <clears throat> lots of things need to be uh, optimal um, in terms of the heart structure and function for that procedure to be as successful as possible. And um, so sometimes there are other procedures done along the way. Um, for example, if there are narrowings of the pulmonary arteries, it's important to make sure they're enlarged. So sometimes surgery or stents are performed to ensure that. Sometimes if a valve is leaking, that needs to be repaired. Sometimes um, uh, patients need to be on medication to help the contraction of the heart uh, because the heart function is very important. Um, most often we will do a cardiac catheter procedure where we test those things uh, before this 
final stage of the operation is done, uh, where we will, um, while the child is asleep, put catheters into the heart from, from the veins in the leg usually and neck, where we can pass a catheter into the heart to measure the pressure, to do angiograms. We can pass a catheter into the lung arteries to check the size of them. And so that's usually routine for this last operation. Um, <clears throat> the Fontan operation does lead to um, a change in how the blood flow is around the body and uh, there, as I've said there's an increased pressure in the central veins. It is a lower than normal uh, cardiac output situation. There can be reduced exercise capacity um, and we have found that there is um, there are some problems that can develop with some of the organs in the body, particularly relating to the increased pressure on them, uh, including liver, kidney, gut, and, and the heart muscle itself. But um, <clears throat> with uh, all of the modifications over time, we've come a very long way from the situation where most babies could not survive for a long period um, to much improved long-term health outcomes and and that's the purpose of this sort of registry and the work that is done is to help continue that and make as many improvements as possible um, okay <clears throat>